Well, this morning we're going to conclude this series on the ground. This series where we've been looking at how we can overcome adversity and we can fight for faith whether life is difficult or even when life is good. And today we're going to conclude this series by looking at the importance of God's Word. Now, Tony Evans wrote, said, My wife at various times over the year wanted to take classes at Dallas Seminary. She didn't want to take the classes in a traditional way. She wanted to audit the class. You see, when you audit the class, you can go and sit and get all the information, but there's no outside requirements. You don't have to study. You don't have to take any tests. You get the information, but you don't have the burdens of the class. Many Christians come to church on Sunday mornings and audit the sermon. They go to class. They have a textbook in hand. They sit in the regular seat and listen to the professor, but all they want to do is audit the class. They don't want to be expected to do any homework. They don't want to pass any tests that God sends their way to check their understanding. These Christians will pay money for the class, but they don't want to have to meet any requirements. They also don't expect to receive a degree or diploma from the school. As long as my wife audits her seminary class, <clears throat> She'll have no credit on her transcript. There'll be no graduation ceremony and no one will ever hand her a degree. As long as you audit your Christian life, there will be no passing grades. There will be no divine recognition and there will be no experience of your calling. See, it's for this reason that many people don't read or study their Bible. It's for this reason that many will turn from the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, For a time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to miss. It's because of the grind of life, because of the persecution, because of the pressures of society, many people who claim to be Christians will turn from sound doctrine. Unfortunately, we see this happening in our churches today. Many churches, many denominations have turned away from the truth of the gospel. Many have turned away from the truth of Scripture, the truth of God's Word in order to to be inclusive to the world. They have forsaken the very words of God in order to please man. Not only do they turn from the truth, but they allow people that agree with them to teach them. To tell them what they want to hear, not to tell them the truth of God's word. They not only buy into the myths and the lies of society, but they surround themselves with the people that teach such things. When someone comes to them with the truth of God's Word, they kick them out. They accuse them of spreading hate, of being bigots, or being racist, or you name it. They call us that. Now remember, these are people that claim to be Christians. This isn't people that are, belong to the world. These are people that claim to belong to Christ, but they act like the world in persecuting those who stand up and stand in the truth of God's Word. Many times the teachers that tickle their itching ears come from inside the church. Many times they start the movement away from God's Word from within in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, we get this warning. It says, But there will also be false prophets among you, just as there will, among the people, just as there will be false, false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruct, destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth and to disrupt. See, these false teachers are leaders in the church with influence. 
with charisma, and they have a following. They begin by introducing small heresies, which are untruths with just a little bit of truth mixed in. They twist God's Word to say what they want, going so far as to omit the parts that don't fit their narrative. They begin to introduce new ideas, a new doctrine into the church. And because of their influence and their charisma, people follow them. People trust them. People believe in them and their teachings and are thus being led away from the truth. See, the world accepts all these inclusive teachers, all these inclusive churches. But God says otherwise. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 32, He says, Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So because they were once Christian teachers, Christian leaders, they know the truth of God's Word. They know God's righteous decree against sin. But not only do they practice their false teachings, they approve of those who act on their false teachings. Those who follow the false teachings not only buy in to the myths and the lies that they're told, but they are, and they approve of those who live sinful lifestyles, they participate as well. In Romans chapter 1, verses 25 and 28, it says they exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, tell me if this doesn't sound like today's society, because of this, God gave them over to their shameful lust. Even the women exchange their natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men can do, committed indecent acts with other men and received for themselves the due penalty for their per perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. See, the things today... We were warned about 2,000 years ago. And because of their willingness to abandon the truth of God's Word for a lie, God allows them to live as they choose to live. And then here Paul uses the example of homosexuality as being normal, which the Bible says is against God. But He'll allow them to live in their unnatural unnatural relationships because they refuse to believe the truths of God's word he gives them over to their depraved minds and allows them to do what we know and even what they know shouldn't be done and because they once knew and once believed the truth of God they will pay the due penalty for their perversion eternal suffering in the absence of God. See, God will allow those who are willing to accept, to teach, and to practice what goes against His Word despite knowing the truth to live as they choose. But see, we don't have to live that way. We can resist the devil. And in James chapter 4, verse 7, He says, Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, in order to protect ourselves from this happening to us, from us falling into the lies and the myths and the false teachings of these people, we have to resist the devil because all of it's coming from him. So we must submit ourselves to God, submit ourselves to studying and learning God's word and his truth. Instead of buying into the myths and lies of false teachers, submit ourselves to God. In order to keep ourselves from falling in the trap of their lies, we have to resist the devil. <clears throat> See, if we talked about the past couple of weeks, that's why God gives us His armor. The full armor 
of God to protect ourselves from Satan's attacks. And understand that Satan is going to attack us when we're vulnerable. If we leave off a piece of the armor, guess where he's going to attack? Right when we left it off. When we're vulnerable, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, it says, Be self-controlled and alert, because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. See, since we know that Satan, like a lion, is going to attack, he's going to attack the weak spots. He's going to attack the weak-minded. He's going to attack the spiritually weak and the wounded Christian. We know that that's where Satan's going to attack, so we have to be alert. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared. We have to put on the full armor of God. In order to keep ourselves from falling into Satan's trap of lies, we have to be self-controlled, standing strong in the truth of God. <laughs> standing strong in the truth of God's Word. And then and only then are we able to resist Satan. Only then will we be able to stand firm in our faith. See, when we understand that Satan is not just sitting down waiting for us to screw up, He's prowling around like a roaring lion. He's looking for someone to devour. When we understand that, we'll understand our need to be prepared to resist his attacks, to resist his lies, to resist his false teachings. And then we can stand firm. We can also stand firm because we have help. We're not doing this alone. Not only does God give us His armor, but He's there with us. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, He says, You, your children, aren't from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. See, we belong to God. We have overcome the world. Not we will overcome the world. We have overcome the world. We can continue to overcome the world. We can resist the devil. We can stand strong in our faith because greater is He who is in us. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, God is in us. And He is greater than the one that's in the world. He is greater than Satan and all of his forces. He is greater than any false teachers that we can come across. See, God is more powerful than even Satan himself can understand. Christ has already struck the flail blow to Satan, and Satan knows it. He may not want to admit it, but he knows it, and therefore he wants to take everybody down with him that he can take down. And if he can convince somebody that's accepted Christ as their Savior of one little lie, then he can convince him of another little lie. And another little lie, and it continues to grow, and continues to grow until we're buying into those false prophets. Until we've walked away from Jesus Christ. Until we've turned away from the truth. Knowing that he wants to take everybody down with him that he can, he's going to attack, he's going to spread the false teachings. And many, unfortunately, believe him. <laughs> But in order to keep ourselves from falling in that trap, we must study and stand strong on God's Word because the Scripture will give us all the truth that we need. See, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, it says, All Scripture is god breathed and is useful in teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every Good work. See, while men wrote the words of Scripture, they're the ones that put pen to paper, or in some cases, chisel to rock. Every word of Scripture was breathed by God into their hearts and their minds. 
God's Word, the Bible, is the very breath of God. And it is the truth. Scripture tells us, and it's not, in, it's not in your outline, but in John chapter 1, Scripture tells us that Jesus is the Word of God. And that He is the truth of God. Therefore, every word in God's holy word, every word in the Bible is the very being of Jesus Christ. There, therefore, it is a must. It's not a want to. It's a must that we read it, study it, learn it, believe it, trust in it, speak it, and most importantly, live it. Every single word is useful. And James, again, this isn't in your bulletin, but James tells us, says, don't just listen to the word, do what it says. Why? Because it's useful in teaching the truth of God. It's useful in rebuking false teachings. God's Word is useful in correcting the false teachings, the false doctrine, pointing to the truth of God. It's useful in training in righteousness, thoroughly equipping every Christian to do the work that God created us to do. In Romans 15, verse 4, it says, For everything that was written, in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Paul wrote here, he said that every word, he was talking about the Old Testament, but now we can throw in the New Testament with that, was written to teach us. It was written to teach us the truth of God, to encourage us and give us hope. It was written to give us endurance as we go through the growth, the grind of life, as we face persecution, as we face trials, as we face attacks from Satan and his evil forces. God's Word was written to teach us the truth of God. It was written to rebuke us when we sin. It was written to correct us when we start to go astray. It was written to thoroughly equip us to fulfill God's plan in our lives. It was written to give us the tools that we would need to resist the devil, to resist false teaching, to resist the temptation to buy in to the false myths and to keep us from turning away from the truth of God. Therefore, again, it is a must that we read it, study it, learn it, believe it, trust it, speak it, and live it. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is alive, is living, and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Do you want to know why false teachers, unbelievers, and those who have turned away from the faith hate to hear God's Word? The truth of God's Word? It's because God's Word is like a double-edged sword. It doesn't just cause flesh wounds. It cuts straight to the heart. It cuts straight to the soul, straight to the spirit. It penetrates flesh and bone and hits right at the heart of a person. That's why those that are under the influence of Satan hate to hear it because it cuts their hearts and it hurts. Y'all have heard the truth hurts, right? Well, the truth of God hurts the hearts of those who are separated from Him. That's why false teachers and non-believers and former Christians attack Christians who tell the truth of Scripture. That's why the world calls us hateful. They call us bigots, racists, 
and whatever else they can call us. It's not that we're not telling the truth of God's Word. It's because the truth of God's Word cuts them so deeply. And every word of God's Word is still alive and active. It hasn't changed. It hasn't evolved. It's still the same truth that was written over 2,000 years ago. It still has the power that it did on the very day that it was written. It has the power to change hearts. God's Word has the power to change lives. It has the power to save souls. It has the power to protect and sustain God's people no matter what the world throws at us. God's Word has the power to encourage us. It has the power to even change the world. And all we have to do is read it, study it, learn it, believe it, trust it, speak it, and live it. And it has not changed, nor has Christ. And in Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It says, Christ Jesus is the very Word of God. We know that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The truth of God's Word will never change no matter what, how the world wants to change it, no matter how a church wants to change it, no matter how anyone wants to change the Word of God, it never changes. It still has all the power to cut deep into our hearts, into our souls and our spirits, which are our very existence. It still has the power to help God's people stand strong in their faith and resist the devil. We must understand the importance of Scripture in order to understand why it is so important that we need to study it and read it, learn it, believe it, trust it, speak it, and live it. See, if we don't want the grind of life, the grind of this world, to turn us from our faith, to turn us from sound doctrine, to turn us towards false teachers, we must know and understand the importance and the power of God's Word in our lives. So this morning we've looked at why Scripture is so important in our lives, and I ask you, are you reading God's Word? Do you have a hunger in your heart for God's Word? Are you just reading it? Or are you studying it? Are you learning God's Word? Not just skimming over it. Not just reading it because you think you have to. Are you studying it? Are you learning it? Do you believe it? Do you trust it? Are you living it? Are you living God's Word because your life, the way you live your life, the things that you say, the things that you post on social media, whatever it is that you do may be the only Bible that some people ever read. It may be the only way that someone comes to know Christ because they're watching the way you live your life. And if we're living our life according to the truth of God's Word, oh, the impact that it can have. Are you speaking God's Word? Are you sharing it with others who are lost? with those who are struggling in their lives. See, God's Word is just as important today as it was 2,000 years ago. And it's going to be just as important tomorrow as it is today. But if we don't know it, we can't stand up for it. If we don't know what God's Word says, how can we know when the devil is telling us lies. And if we're not living it, if we're not speaking it and sharing it with others, how can we do what God called us to do? This morning, make it your mission. Make it your goal in life. Pray that God will give you a hunger and a desire to learn, to read, to study, and to live His Word.
Because living His Word, reading His Word, studying His Word, learning His Word, is living Christ. 